likes box box Zoe likes box box It's not your typical Romeo Romeo Julia Julia die story And then they meet one day and Fate does all these things with my daily life the brother Hello everyone Today we're gonna be talking about books Books I have been reading recently since the start of quarantine. I'm not gonna lie, when you look at it, it's not that much. But personally, I do do my best to a lot 30 minutes before I go to sleep every single night to read. But yeah, let's just get on with it, shall we? I'm gonna be showing you guys in chronological order, but like reverse. Starting with the one I'm reading right now, Becoming Better Grown Ups by Brad Montag. It's basically about how you can be a better grown up for yourself for the future generations to come, for your own children. Although I just turned 20, I feel like I can relate to what these grown-ups are going through. As early as now, I've already lost some of those childlike instincts, childlike characteristics. And people already describe me as someone who's childlike, so that says a lot. I'm still this much through the book, but one of my favorite quotes I've read from this book so far is this one, okay. Better grown-ups do not believe that they should just wait around for other better grown-ups to show up. There might be people around who are more trained to do any number of things better than you can. But please know this, no one is better suited to be you than you. You are perfectly cast in your role and we need you. Children need you, the world needs you. Even though they might feel inadequate, great grown-ups show up. So show up, show up, show up. Show up! So, so, so good. 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10. Would recommend this book. Okay, next. The next book is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. The author of this book is a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Literature? 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 Bro. Honestly. It's basically about these two men. One who is so big, muscular, tall, but is super childlike. He would not hurt anyone. He has the innocence, the mind of a child. And this small, scrawny man who's basically grumpy. He's a grumpy guy. They're the exact polar opposites in terms of personality, in terms of physical appearance. They're basically partners. They're partners in life in a world full of lonely ass people. And throughout the book, oh my god, every time George gets mad at Lenny, oh yeah, George is a scrawny guy, Lenny's a big childlike guy. Every time George gets mad at Lenny, my heart breaks. And this book, oh my god, it is so deep. I had to read it twice wise in order for me to really like take all the lessons in. Every single character in here, the way they act, it's all justified by their loneliness, by their insecurities, and it's just so, it's so like, oh, you know, it's so good. Another 10 out of 10 would recommend. You can literally read it in one sitting. And the quote, the quote that I absolutely love from this book is, guys like us that work on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world. They got no family, they don't belong no place, they ain't got nothing to look ahead to. With us, it ain't like that. We got a future, we got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit around in no barroom blowing our jack just because we got no else place to go. If them other guys gets in jail, they can rot for all anybody gives a damn. But not us. And why? Because I got you to look after me, and you got me to look after you, and that's why. Oh my god, if you guys read this book, you'll know why it's so good! It's so good! <sighs> 10 out of 10 would recommend you guys. It's so short. It's such a short book, but you learn so much. And it hits... Oh! Why did I do that? It hits all of your feels. You guys, I cried. I bawled my eyes out in the ending. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Now the next book I don't have with me. Actually, two of the books that I've read throughout quarantine are not with me. I lent them to friends. But the next book is called It's All in Your Head by Russ. Now this one, it's basically about getting out of your own way, getting out of your own head, overcoming your doubts and fears to really reach your potential and, you know, just like letting your goals, letting your dreams just like go up there, you know, go past the moon, past the stars. The only limit that you have is the one that you set on yourself. And once you overcome all of that, you can literally do anything. 
That's basically what the book says. But then, like, obviously, so much more details that I'm not mentioning right now. With that being said, I do give the book like a 7.5 out of 10 because it's more on the, I don't want to say, arrogant side. There's a part there that says humility gets in your way. Humility is an insult to yourself, which I completely do not agree with. I think that humility isn't thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And that's just one of the many things I don't agree with. It is still a pretty good book. I still would recommend it. Maybe if you borrow it from someone rather than buying it because it's also a pretty expensive book. <laughs> If you have someone to borrow it from, by all means read it. It did help me out a little bit. But yeah, I guess, you know, one woman's opinion. The next book is this, 99 Days by Katie Kotugno. This, <laughs> let me tell you, this. This book is like reality TV. It is full of drama. Oh my god. Mostly because this girl, her character development was not good. There was not much development on her part. It's basically about a girl whose mom is an author. She's dating this guy who is her best friend's brother and she slept with her boyfriend's brother. So there's three siblings, right? Best friend, boyfriend, brother. She slept with the boyfriend's brother when they freshly broke up. And then after that, she went to her mom. She ran to her mom and was like, oh my god, like, what do I do? I just love with the brother. And then after that, she goes back to the boyfriend. They're like happy, they're okay. And then the mom goes and writes about it, produces a new book. The book's a hit. Oh my god, everyone knows. The boyfriend knows. The sister knows. Everyone knows. The whole town knows. And mind you, this town is a small town. So they do gossip a lot. Basically, she goes into this new town and she starts over, right? Basically. Oh my god, Dad. Basically. Why? Is there an advanced leap? You're so funny, Dad! You're so funny! Let me just wait for them to go upstairs. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Basically, she runs away. She runs away to a whole other town. And over there, she tries to kind of reinvent herself. The summer before college, she goes back to her hometown. And that's where the book starts. So much drama, and the book hasn't even started. So, you are in for a ride with this book. Book. It's super entertaining, but I do have to give this an 8 out of 10. I would recommend it if you just want something to read for entertainment purposes, but I give it an 8 out of 10 because I didn't really learn much from it. I like books where I can really learn something and use it in my life. But there is one quote here that I quite like. It's just really hard to remember your hometown isn't the only place in the world. And I felt that. Dude, the world is such a big place and sometimes it's so hard not to get caught up in your own problems and you feel like your problem is like this big when it's really just this big. You know, it's like this big and you can literally just squash it, get it out of the way. Which leads me to the next book, Nine Days and Nine Nights. It literally follows 99 days. It follows her life in college. I do have to say there's a lot more character development in this book, thank God. There's still some drama though. There's a twist here that I wasn't expecting when I first bought the book and it was pretty good. So I'm giving this book a 9 out of 10. So much drama in two books, honestly. Yikes. The next book that I read was The Sun is Also a Star. This is another book that I do not have with me because I lent it to a friend. It's basically about this girl who's like all science-y. Like, you know, she doesn't believe in fate. She thinks love is just like some chemical reaction in your brain. And then this guy who's like a hopeless romantic. And then they meet one day and fate does all these things to them and it's so good. She learns a lot from him. He learns a lot from her. This whole book happens in just one day but there's so much background to it there's so much context to it there's so much cultural references to it which I was so impressed by she was able to integrate that into their love story which is really really interesting I have two quotes from there that are my absolute favorite number one just because it's meant to be doesn't mean it's meant to last forever it hit me hard. It's so freaking good. And number two, I don't memorize this second quote, but I'm gonna say it in my own words. Basically, it goes like, God is seen in the very best of everyone.
everyone. Like that's how we're all connected. Yeah, okay, you got it. 9.5 out of 10 would recommend. Super, super good. The next book is this, Romeo and or Juliet by Ryan North. It's such a good book because it's not just one story. Let me show you guys. For example, over here, it says choose your character, right? And it says turn to page 36. So we turn to page 36 and then you get like the descriptions of the characters. So Romeo or Juliet. So if you choose Romeo, you turn to a certain page. If you choose Juliet, you turn to another page. From there, you get to choose like what you want your character to do. And there's just so many different ways that this story can go. Literally, I've only finished one story. It's not your typical Romeo, Romeo, Juliet, Juliet, die. Story, you know, it's like different stories in one whole book. I would recommend it 10 out of 10 actually. It's dark humor. So if you like dark humor, honestly go for it. Next book that I read, well I actually reread The Catastrophic History of You and Me by Jess Rothenberg. This is one of the books that I first read after my whole Geronimo Stilton, R.L. Stein, Diary of a Kid, Dark Diaries phase. Up till now, it's one of my favorites. And during quarantine, I decided to reread it just to refresh my brain. And it's still as good as I remember. The book starts with her dying. She dies of literal heartbreak. And then she's in the other side. Like, you know, like purgatory or like heaven or like, you know, whatever's in between that she ends up as a ghost and she meets this guy and this guy brings her around earth like you know she gets to see where her family is now where her ex-boyfriend is and she finds out who she was in her past life they're like twists and turns like i was shook when i read this book it is so 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 good 10 out of 10 what no you know what screw that 15 out of 10 would recommend okay last but not the least always and forever Lara Jean by the one and only Jenny Han. This is the first book that I read this quarantine. As we all know, it's a good book. The movie though, the movie changed and left out a lot of parts. Here, oh my god. When Stormy, okay, I'm pretty sure all of us have read this book, but if you haven't, skip to this number here. Some spoilers ahead. This is one of my favorite parts of the book, and I'm so sad they didn't include this. It's basically Stormy's death. Stormy's death was not included in the movie. Why? But anyways, this is how it went. Stormy taught me that love is about making brave choices every day. That's what Stormy did. She always picked love. She always picked adventure. To her, they were one and the same. And now she's off to a new adventure and we wish her well. That is so true! Oh, I'm so disappointed that they literally just skipped Stormy's death in the movie. Why you gotta do me dirty like that, bro? Yes, that is all for this book, Shindig. And by the way, before any of you come at me, yes, I do highlight my books. Yes, I do write on my books. There are things I do to make sure the lessons from the book stick with me. That's also another thing that makes my books quite personal to me. All of my books are very personal to me because of those highlights, because of those notes. I'm basically putting a piece of me in these books. So yeah, do whatever you want with your books. I'll do whatever I want with my books. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy, my G. Thank you guys so much for listening to me babble about the books I've been reading so far. Hopefully, oh my god, please tell me if you guys decide to read any of them and what your thoughts are. I love talking about books, especially books that I love. And if you guys have any book recommendations for me, comment them down below. I'd love to read them. Remember, silliness leads to happiness and it doesn't hurt to be extra kind every mother freaking day. Can't wait to have fun with you guys in my next video. All the love, as always, from your money girl Zoe. Mwah. Y'all look at my socks though. They're donuts. Cute, cute. Scooby-dooby-doo. I love you. I'm gonna go talk to my grandma now. Bye!